Hello and welcome to another Portworks Lightboard session. My name is Ryan Walner. I'm a tech technical advocate here at Portworks. And today we're going to take you through volume placement strategies. So what does this actually mean? Uh, volume placement strategies, as the name entails, it really allows your configuration to be flexible in terms of where your volumes land in a Kubernetes cluster. So if you have multiple volumes for a specific pod, or staple set, which we'll be talking about today, those volumes can land on specific nodes uh, or near your pods uh, based on these volume placement strategies that can use things like labels. So we're gonna be dealing with a staple set application. Staple set. Now, if you don't know what a staple set is, we will provide links to the Kubernetes documentation about what a staple set is but it allows you to order uh, stateful services in their scheduling and deployment. So uh, say the application we're gonna be dealing with today is Cassandra. Cassandra comes up with a seed node and subsequent nodes need to be aware of the seed node address. So the first node needs to be set up first um, and be fully ready until the next one allows you to refer to the first one. So. This is kind of what staple set allows you to do uh, among other things, um, but ordering is definitely one of them. And we're gonna be using that example uh, because it does play relevance to volume placement strategies. So a Cassandra application could have two volumes, right? We're gonna be talking about a data volume and a config volume. So Cassandra itself can be deployed with a data volume and a configuration volume, also referenced down here. Um, and those configuration and data volumes may have specific requirements such that the data volume should land on the same node as the application pod and the configuration volume should land next to the data volume. So the way we can do this is by uh, using Portworx volume placement strategies. Um, but first we need to do two things. If our PVCs or our templates for the PVCs, we need to have a uh, label of type equals data for our data volume and type equals config for our config volume. What this allows us to do is refer to those labels later on for our uh, volume placement strategies. Now we're going to be talking about two things for each volume, which is volume anti-affinity and volume affinity. So what uh, volume anti-affinity does is kind of what it tells uh, in the name of itself is it being anti to affinity um, basically does the opposite of the rule uh, for affinity. And an example of that would be if I wanted my um, affinity rule to be, I want my data volume to always land next to type equals config, meaning that my data volume should always land next to a configuration volume. We want my anti-affinity rule to say, but don't let my data volume land next to other data volumes, meaning other nodes in our cluster also have data volumes, but we don't want them next to each other in the same node or you know, things like failure resistance or just data locality. So we can do the same thing with our configuration and say my anti-affinity don't land next to other configuration volumes, but do land next to other data volumes. And what this does is it allows for uh, the volume of each node to be placed according to the volume placement strategy. So our data volume for uh, node one, say the pod gets uh, scheduled to uh, Portworks node one. So this will say that Okay, our volume is going to be going down and also be placed on node one. And our affinity rule says 
also place the configuration volume on node one as well. So you have the data landing next to the configuration, also on the same node as the pod. Once that's done, it moves on to the next Cassandra node and onto the next Cassandra node and does the same thing. So each one will have its own configuration volume here and its own data volume. And the volume placement strategy rules for anti-affinity and affinity will make sure that the volumes land on the same node as their configuration volume. And that's depicted with these lines. And um, you can see that Cassandra node one lands on Portworx node one along with this configuration data volume. Cassandra node two lands on Portworx node two. Uh, these are also communities workers and along with its co configuration volume and data volume. And Cassandra node three lands on Portworx node four uh, along with its configuration and data volume. And these rules which can be tied to a storage class, um, allow you to do that. And we'll provide links to examples that allow you to do that as well. So hopefully this makes sense in terms of how you can configure your volume placement strategies with anti-affinity and affinity rules for placement of your uh, PVCs in Kubernetes. Until next time, take care.